C. Rose, what were you doing? I wasn't doing it. Can I? I have to explain. People could hear me before you joined, then you joined, then my audio cut off. So it wasn't anything I did. Okay. Okay. Welcome back. What, what's the <laughs> Dude, I'm exhausted. Look at me. I know. You look, you, look, you look so bad, you almost look as bad as I do on a good day. Like, I actually look pretty good, but I feel exhausted. Good. Good. Now, yeah. so you went on a fishing trip with your brothers. Because you had essentially a day off from everything, does Olivia give you a pass and let you catch up on sleep today, or do you just have to get right back into the thing? Uh, it's sort of a pass. Like, I slept in a little bit. I slept until 7 today, which is about half an hour past what I usually sleep in on days okay. that I work out. So, you know, she's good. Yeah, okay. but she's a good one. She's a good one. Yeah. Did you catch me anything? You know, we went out. We caught – we had four people on the boat. We caught two fish, one bluefin, one yellowtail. We had another bluefin on that a seal came and snatched from us, dude. So we, we, we could have brought three on board. We brought two on. Um, mm -hmm. So to answer your question, no, I don't have enough fish for you. Thank you. <laughs> That's really all I cared about. Let's, don't, let's move on and talk some baseball. <laughs> uh, let's start off big Field of Dreams game. It is finally here. <clears throat> Yankees and White Sox. You can check it out tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern on your local Fox affiliate. What are you most looking forward to when you watch tonight? That was a tough question for me because I'll be honest with you guys. I haven't paid a lot of attention to the game. It doesn't really pique my interest. But then I started kind of reading about it. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the hell does that mean? I'm tell I'm be oh, can I be honest? Yes, please do. Okay, I'm telling you, like it just it didn't pique my interest. I started looking into it, reading about like the local town. I'm excited to see how it how they do. It's big for them. I, I saw their mayor was talking about how like <laughs> this is so Iowa. I love. He said everyone mowed their lawn and put their flags out. Like that's like that means like everyone's putting on their Sunday best essentially, mm -hmm. right? Right. So I like that. I'm, this is what I'm looking forward to. I want to see the production value. I know they put a lot of time and money into this thing, yes. and it should be awesome. It's Major League Baseball. So I think that I want to see how that goes, how it all plays out, because I think there's an opportunity in the future for uh, Major League Baseball to have this synergy with other stuff, not just baseball movies, other movies as well. I know, you know players don't like the gimmicky stuff too much, uh, but if we can get in and do some of these – you know, different genres of movies. I think it's a way to bring younger fans to the game, which is essentially all we're trying to do ever. So um, if this goes well, I think it'll lead to that. So I'm, I'm curious about that. Well, we've already had the game in Williamsport in the Little League World Series. Yeah. I love that. I think that's worked out great uh, over the years. Um, this, I, I can't wait for it. I can't wait to see the introductions, the players coming out of the corn, all that sort of stuff. I'll be watching everything. I'm going to be a little bit behind because I got some stuff going on late in the afternoon Pacific time, but I'll be watching it, you know, on my DVR from the start. Not going to skip anything. So I, I can't wait for that. Once the baseball starts, the baseball starts. I wish they had made the corn in play. I got to be honest with you. I was talking <laughs> with Giolito about this because he's going to be, he's, he won't be pitching in the game, but he'll be there with the White Sox. I said, we should have made the corn part of the play. That way it's like when you were a little kid, everything's in play. So, yeah, if Luis Robert has to go into the corn to go snatch a ball that Aaron Judge hit, Judge has got to run all the way around the bases to get his home run. That would have been awesome. This, I mean, yeah, that would have been awesome. This is serving baseball's, like, demographic. It's a little bit older, right? Like, people who are nostalgic about this movie yes. are, are the, of that age. And I think that's fine. I think the next time we do something like this should be toward, geared towards – Maybe the younger generation. Well, but I don't, uh, I don't agree with you necessarily. My 15-year-old son is super excited about it. Okay. Is that because his dad is super excited about it? Or because no, he's super he's, excited about it? I think he's legitimately, he was upset that we had something at 3 o'clock, so we're going to be home a little bit late. You know, like he wanted to be in front of the TV right at 4 o'clock. Okay, maybe, maybe I completely missed the mark. I, I, I'm excited for the game. I want to see how well they did. They've been talking this up. This has been in work yeah. for a long time. I'm curious to see how it goes. Yeah, well, I talked to Millar yesterday. Did the, the show from out there yesterday. He said it was, it's pretty damn cool. So I'm excited for it. I can't wait to get going. All right, reason I'm wearing the Tigers hat today, Miguel Cabrera, home run number 499. He did not get 500 last night. 
apparently, according to AJ Hinch, it sounds like Cabrera is going to be back in the lineup for their series finale in Baltimore. Then they start a six game homestand tomorrow against the Cleveland Indians. Shouldn't Cabrera be in the lineup today, or should they save it for the fans of Detroit? I get why people would say save it for Detroit, but I think it just kind of takes a guy out of his rhythm if you do that. If you tell him, if, you know, Hinch goes, Maggie, we're going to sit you, we want you to hit the homer in Detroit, then Maggie starts thinking about hitting home runs, and it doesn't come. I think it's better to leave a guy in his routine and just say, when it comes, it comes. Start focusing on these numbers. I've seen a couple guys go after you know bigger numbers, uh-huh. um, and when they start thinking about it, you know it doesn't come. So, one, I would say let Miggy do whatever he wants. Uh-huh. If I was Hinch, I would just say it's up to you, big guy. Um, but then I, I agree kind of with him playing. I know it's we want it to happen in Detroit. We really do, but you really can get guys out of their rhythm and into like a mental uh, space that isn't conducive to hitting home runs. Uh, if you start sitting and saying, you're going to do it now. So it's probably the right thing to do. Here's what I would have done. I would have told him earlier in the week, you have the afternoon game off on Thursday. Yeah, but they didn't know he was going to hit. I know. Conference. But just, I would have gone that direction. I would have said, hey, Miggy, we're going to give you a day off. Usually veteran managers are very good about letting their vets know when they are playing and when they're off, right? For the most part. What's that? Hello. Are you still with me? Oh, boy. Did you just fall asleep? <laughs> I was right listening, now? but I didn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> you still, you still uh, dreaming about Bluefin? I worked hard yesterday. Man, say your, what'd, you, what'd you ask me? I said, aren't most veteran managers pretty good about letting their veterans know when they're playing and when they're off a couple days in advance? Yeah, so that's why, you know, they do. They do do that. But yeah, maybe that's why you didn't want to sit up. Okay. Here's why you should – I would, I would have him sit today. I understand your point about the rhythm and thinking about it and all that sort of stuff. Number one, he has hit more home runs in his career than the Cleveland Indians than any other team. So I'm just telling you, as an Indians fan, he's going to hit one Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. It is happening. Number two, there have been – he will. I think he's going to be the 28th member of the 500 home run club. It's never been done in Detroit. Detroit's one of the oldest franchises. They never has a visiting player done it in Motown or a hometown play. It's happened twice in Baltimore. Happened with Frank Robinson, happened with Eddie Murray. So the people in Baltimore have seen this sort of stuff happen before. Oh God, stop with that. What? what? That doesn't Look, make any sense. See, if A.J. Hinch it happened was with Frank to Robinson, that's a long time ago, bro. But it's happened. R.I.P. It's happened. It's happened. So well, I'll on. tell you this much. I saw uh, Jim Tomey hit number 600 in Detroit. So, you know, whatever, man. Okay, that was pretty cool. Number was 500 was awesome, though. He hit a walk-off. I was on third base for number 600. How about that? Were you really? Oh, that's really cool. I like that. People forget I used to play baseball. What? What? You did what? Come on, man. Let's move on thought, to the next question. Dude, I thought you were a fisherman. <laughs> uh, quick reminder that today's Instagram live show is presented to you by a good friend over at Manscaped, manscaped.com. Use the code word ROSE. You get 20% off plus free shipping. We've got the brand new 4.0 lawnmower, okay? It's got 9,000 RPM motor-powered 360-degree rotary dual-blade system. Takes care of everything down south. That's special. Someone in your life is going to be like, you care about me, I'm going to care about you. In addition to that, we got the Weird Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, the Crop Reviver Toner, plus two free gifts, the Performance Boxer Briefs, and the Shed Travel Bag. So once again, it's manscaped.com. Use the code word ROSE. You get 20% off your offer, plus free shipping. Go out and do that today. All right, bigger story out of Atlanta last night. Ozzy Albies, the two-out walk-off homer in extra innings to pull Atlanta into a first-place tie with the Philadelphia Phillies. Or Joey Votto, two more homers last night, including a game tire in the ninth, giving him a league-best 14 homers since the All-Star break. I love Joey Votto. Love what he's doing. But I think the story is Ozzie Albies. And, you know, not just him, but the, the Braves coming, coming back. They blow a 5 5-0 lead, I believe it was, they had at one point. They blow it, get behind in extras, and then I think they were down to the last two strikes, Chris. Is that right? Yes, and Ozzie just said – he called game. And, you know, when you're a teammate in the dugout 
and you know you got two strikes left in the game, you got a guy like Ozzy up, you're praying for something like that. Actually, you're just praying for him to get on base. And then when you hear that pop and you see him take that first step out of the box, you know it's gone. There's no better feeling, man. And put him in first place with the dang Phillies. I know. Getting their stuff beat in by the Dodgers. But the Braves making a run without anybody. With all their guys gone. Well, don't say without anybody. Well, they do have, I'm just they do have saying. the reigning MVP, Ozzy Albies, you know, is an all star. You know what I mean, Chris. I don't mean, don't take it literally, bro. It's just like a figure of speech, well, all right? Well, but it's not right. <laughs> you're not acting. No Acuna. You're back on that fishing boat. No Acuna. You know, Noah's not back yet. You know, you know, the guy screw, who's screw Ozuna, but they don't have Ozuna. You, you know. haven't had him all year. Okay. All right. I, you know I, I mean, what I'm I get saying. it. I get it. They're missing some big names. No no question. Travis Darno, who had a really good year for him, just got back. Just got first. back. You're right. It, it, they've, they've battled through, like, a lot of teams here in 2021. Um, there was a great moment. Huge Ozzy Albies fan. I am in love with what's going on here with Joey Votto. Yeah. So, as I said, 14 homers since the All-Star break. Nobody else has more than 10. He is absolutely killing it. That 14 homers in a 20-game stretch is tied for the most ever in Reds history with Frank Robinson. So what does he do during his post-game Zoom press conferences? He stops when he heard that, pulls up a picture of he and Frank at the 2017 All-Star game, saying, here we are. Like, I idolize that guy. Joey Votto has the ability to tie everything together. And it's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. His last 21 games has an OPS over 1,400. In his last 21 games. It's – talk about being on a heater, dude. <clears throat> it's silly, man. That's yeah, he's – All right. He's very special. Now, because everybody uh, motherfucked me the other day for doing the either or, and then I said neither, and everybody crucified me, I am going to answer this next question the right way because I don't want to be beat up again verbally. I can't take it. Biggest story among these three from Wednesday – Wayno's 88 pitch complete game at age 39, Burns 10 straight Ks to tie the record, or Bellinger seems to be breaking out of his season long slump with two big flies in Philly. This was tough for me, Chris, because those two pitchers, man, what they did was something special. But I think in terms of like the season, I'm going with Belly. You know, him coming out of, you know, what's been a season-long slump, I mean, he's still hitting 180 or something like that. But he's on, like, an eight-game hitting streak, I believe. Uh, four homers in that span. And we know, like, the Dodgers are trying to win the division. Like, they do not want to be in the wild card game. The right. Giants are still playing, like, their hair is on fire, winning games left and right. They need someone to step up. I mean, they need be- they need they need their guy. Like, Belly is one of their guys. Yeah. You know, if they want to make a run at the division, I think they're still four games back. Um, they, he needs to get hot. He's getting hot at the right time. I hope it continues for him because he's a lot of fun to watch when he's going off. So, again, those pitchers, man. You, I hope you're talking about the pitchers because if you don't, I'll circle back. But I think it, in terms of, like, importance to the season, uh-huh. it's Bellinger. I, I would agree with that. But since I was an- answering the question that was asked, which one caught your eye just Wednesday. But I, I like your explanation of the big picture. Wainwright, I think, yeah. has had one of the sneaky great seasons of the year. And for him to throw what we're, what everybody calls a Maddox, you know, Love that, by the way. less than 100 pitch complete game, uh, Shuddy was, he's less than three weeks away from turning 40. And I don't know if you remember, but a couple of years ago, I think it was 2017 or 18, his ERA was over five. And I was like, boy, it's been a great career, Wayne. I was like, stop, just stop, go be, go be dad. You know, at the time, he had four daughters. He since then has adopted a son. But guess what? He's gotten some superpowers. Yeah. He's at, and I'll be disappointed, actually, if he retires. Because he still has more than something left in the tank. He's been far and away their best pitcher. And one of the best pitchers in the National League. I think it's amazing. Yeah, and someone, you know, I thought the same thing. Someone in the chat just said, you know, it was the Pirates, though. I thought the same thing. But go look at the Pirates lineup. There's some bangers in there. There's... There are some good players in that Pirates lineup. And guess what? It's a major league lineup no matter how you shake it out. But the Pirates lineup isn't like some rollover BS lineup. There's some actually good hitters in that lineup. Mm-hmm. And, the, I mean, the 88 pitches thing is a joke. Yeah. We, came, we came off the boat yesterday, 
and all the guys I went with are baseball fans, all grew up playing and stuff. First thing anyone said was, holy shit, Wayno threw a complete game, 88 pitches? Like, that's, mm-hmm. you know, in this day and age, you do not see stuff like that, Chris. So I wanted to say that, but I just, whatever, man. We gave him his due. That's a good job. And, and Burnsy, fucking 10, 10 strikeouts. Look out. I know. It's crazy. Tying Nola and Seaver. It's a tough question, Chris. It is, but it was fun. It was fun. Um, all right, last one. Favorite part of the movie, Field of Dreams? You're going to hate me, man. I don't even remember the movie at all. I think I've seen it once before. Oh, my God. I can't lie to the people. I could have Googled, like, a favorite scene and just, like, said something, Chris, but I'm, I want to be honest with everybody. <laughs> this is unbelievable. I'm going to need a moment. I've seen it, I think. I've seen it, but I don't remember anything. I remember... Uh, no, I don't remember anything. All right. I, I love the movie. Uh, I saw it the first time with one of my best friends, Craig Grenner, when we were in high school. Uh, loved it. Obviously, there's the whole father-son implications and want to have a catch, Dad, which is actually one of the worst lines in movie history because I've never asked, hey, you want to have a catch to one of my kids? You want to play catch? That's a – oh, that's the ball around. So, Whatever. But to me, one of the parts that always sticks out is when Costner kids, kidnaps James Earl Jones, Terrence Mann, takes him to Boston. They go watch the game together. The you know, thing flashes on the scoreboard, and uh, you know, he drops him off at his place, and, and he asks Terrence Mann, hey, did you see it? He's like, see what, Ray? And then he flips the uh, Volkswagen uh, van around, and all of a sudden in the lights, there's James Earl Jones standing there. And he goes, Moonlight Graham. And he goes, you saw it. So what, Ray? You saw it, too. You saw it, too. And I was like, yes, this is it. Somebody else saw it. So we're finally going to get some movement in this thing. It's not just one guy hearing shit in the cornfield. There's another guy out there, Fenway Park, who saw the message. Moonlight Graham. Yes. I mean, you need to see the movie anymore. You just acted out the entire thing for me. This is great. Thank you. Thank you. That's a pretty good uh, James Earl Jones uh, voice impression, by the way. It wasn't bad. It's pretty good. It wasn't bad. Now do Darth Vader. Go. <laughs> yeah. uh, you're something else, man. I'm going to look. I apologize to people. I mean, you don't have to apologize. What am I supposed to, Am I supposed to lie to the people or what, Chris? Do no, they no, want me to no, be I, honest? I appreciate your, your honesty. Somebody just wrote the chat. Damn, Rose, give us a spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. Folks, it, the shit's been out over 30 years. Yeah. If you haven't seen it yet, d- don't blame me for the spoiler stuff. I do like Kevin Costner, though. I do like him. I like yeah. I like all of Kevin Costner's movies that everybody hates, dude. I love no, The you Postman. Did not like Water- you did not like Waterworld. I liked Waterworld you and bullshit. The Postman, which are essentially the exact same movie. One's on land and one's on water. That is a lie. There's no way you liked Waterworld. I did. I, I, lo- I, I did. I love it, man. All right. Listen, what do you have coming up on John Boy? Let me think. Thursday. Okay, I got a sequence episode coming out today. We talk about the crown zone and if he's able to take over shortstop for Tatis, which seems like is going to be the play. Um, and then that's it. Tomorrow we have our Friday recap of all the games, mm-hmm. which will be a lot of fun for an on talking baseball. But a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes at John Boy Media. Crazy I know. stuff. So big stuff. Big stuff. What about you, man? What you got? So, latest episode of The Rose Rotation with Miguel Rojas. Uh, He walks us through his ejection in Colorado, what he did afterwards since it happened so early in the game. It's a trip. It's a really good story. Uh, Brock Holt, the ace reliever of the Texas Rangers, talks about the 31-mile-per-hour masterpiece and shows us the artwork of his young son. I believe his name's Griffin. He's kind of become a social media sensation over the years. The piece of art is unbelievable. (laughs) It is. It's it still has me laughing days later and we're getting ready it. to talk to tyler glass now tomorrow it's his first uh first word since uh tommy john surgery so that'll be out on monday good i want to hear i want to hear his voice i miss that beautiful man's voice me too me too bro i'll let you know how he's doing everybody mm-hmm. enjoy the field of dreams game uh ploof go rest in your bed put your feet I'm up going to, i'm going i'm going right back into my bed yeah go rewatch the movie right now <laughs> i'm sure you can go watch it somewhere and when you get to the part where it says moonlight Graham." You I'll remember you. you. Then you can think of me. <laughs> All right? Later. Later. Bro. We'll see you.